Welcome back everybody to BeamNG Drive and today we're dealing with the Ibishu 200BX Type L so this is a mid-range model so not quite base and uh, but no way near the fastest uh, model out there but it has a driver airbag not simulated and alloy wheels and uh, yeah it has 136 horsepower 140 pounds feet of torque weighs 2679 pounds so uh, pretty much a lightweight for a car of this size and uh, yeah it's managed manages to do not 60 in 8 seconds, not to 122.2 seconds and going to a top speed of 126 miles an hour. So as per usual with, the re with these reviews and tests of these kind of cars we're going to uh, hoon it around the uh, grid map, just punish it as much as possible before it can't any, uh, move any further, then free tests, then small overlap tests and then highway crashes against vehicles. So. Uh, yeah, let's see what punishment we can dish out to it here. Uh, in previous instances when I've tried this out on my own, the wheel axles in this have been super strong. They've uh, bent and uh, gone out of uh, shape and whatever, but they've stayed attached. So you do get some weird handling characteristics with this car at times so when you start bending those wheels up. Yeah. Surviving everything so far, although... I don't think we've put it through that much punishments at, at the moment. So let's change that. Whoa! And a roll, and uh, lost up both of our bumpers, but we're still alright. Turn the engine off so we don't uh, starve it of oil, we don't want to uh, punish it too much. There we go, so the roof has caved in a fair old bit. Uh, we're still pretty much driving straight, we're pulling a little bit to the left, but not too much. We are smoking a little bit, as soon as the engine did get starved of oil. Uh, that my intent, which was not my intention. Suspension seems to have collapsed a little bit at the front. I guess that's no surprise. Well, the oil is overheating now, so I think we've wounded the engine by rolling it over. It doesn't seem to have all that much power anymore. And that is not going to help, and the engine's locked up. So yeah, some engines on this game do lock up when oil has slightly been starved on for the engine, so which is a little bit of a problem, or maybe there was an oil leak or something, but yeah. Didn't survive all that much uh, in terms of the engine, but the rest of the car held up remarkably well. So, uh, yeah, and the radiator didn't bust, the wheels were pretty much still straight. So, uh, yeah, surprised how uh, it, well it took it in that regards, but yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed that the engine did uh, conk out from oil overheating. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a shame, but let's get over to the rollover sled. See what it can do there. So, yeah, you can, you can see, despite having less than 150 horsepower, Obviously, it isn't all that much. Still able to get up to a reasonable amount of speed in a short space of time. We'll just reload it here so uh, we don't have to keep driving as far. Let's get onto the rollover sled. So, we do it three times on this rollover sled, but obviously, if we can't survive three times, then uh, it's a big fail. Every other car has so far. So let's see if this can. Like I said, the wheel axles are quite strong, but they do bend as a result of that. Which as we are seeing already on that rear wheel. And one of the front wheels as well now. didn't quite come down on its wheels on its own. But yeah, those wheels have uh, bent a fair bit, especially the one on the right. I think the l one on the uh, yeah the uh, front left right one as well has also gone, so uh, that's not helpful. It does at least still mean that the car can drive instead of them breaking off immediately. Right, 
Let's see if we can survive this second go. Anywhere near as much that time, but it was taking wheel damage again. So, is this is going to be able to drive all that nicely. No, it's not. It's one tire firing at it. And it's quite crabby in terms of the way it's driving as well. We're still able to make it to the, uh, the rollover sled, so that is a win on that regard. But we are not going to be able to. Uh, get on properly I don't think I'm going to have to help it in this regard if I can come on you can make it or not yeah, those wheels have really been buggered up. So yeah, if they survive this second, or this third go, then I'll uh, be surprised because they are extremely deformed. I mean, the rest of the car's holding up well. The roof is all right. Doors have stayed shut. Hell, it's not even lost any bumpers yet, so uh, the bodywork itself is fine. So, so the wheels uh, are strong in some regards, but extremely weak in another, so uh, it's kind of a weird paradox in that regard. But yeah, it survived those uh, rollovers fine. In terms of passengers and drivers especially, but those wheels are really buggered, as you can see by the way it's driving. It's pulling hard to the left, and it's hard to keep it straight or going quickly at all, so uh, that's just the way it is sometimes. But yeah, let's uh, go into the crash hard barrels now, see how it, uh, it deals with some explosions. I imagine it'll do well. Maybe the steering wheel will just go through the f uh, front windscreen. That's just a glitch, really. It's not really the car's fault. Well, the front took all of the damage pretty much there. But outside of G-forces and lack of seat belts, uh, if people weren't wearing them, then uh, yeah. They just probably survived that. But the car itself has taken a lot of damage. I'm surprised the engine hasn't died, but it's not driving anywhere because, yeah, the diff isn't letting it run on one wheel. So, uh, yeah, but it did that really rather well nicely. So, uh, let's see how it deals with a cinder block wall. I imagine it will do well. Gonna be hitting it right dead on, but this might throw up something interesting. Nope, it's fine. Most cars are fine with this test. It just really exposes whether or not they're able to deal with a uh, heavy movable impact, uh, movable object. So, uh, and it is, and because it's got no sunroof, you're not going to get anything through the uh, into the passenger area. Uh, but yeah, the overall body shape hasn't been changed at all. So. Uh, yeah, dealt with all that really nicely. So, uh, yeah, grid map, not particularly, uh, it didn't deal with uh, that aspect ra rather well because obviously the oil killed the engine, but roll over test outside of the wheels bending was fine. Explosion, fine, and, uh, yeah, cinder block wall, fine as well. So, uh, yeah, it's passed with flying colours so far because three out of four is a pass as far as I'm concerned. So let's uh, move on to the crash hall and uh, see how it deals with three small overlap crash tests at different speeds. Right, so here we are at the crash hall. Uh, most cars have failed at the 60 mile an hour uh, crash that we're going to be doing, but 
majority have past the 30 and 40 mile an hour impact so let's do the 30 mile an hour impact first see how this deals with it every car has passed this refined colour so uh, I imagine this will be no different because uh, even though it's obviously quite slow most cars do crash at these kind of impacts it's not often you get a uh, high impact crash to be honest Yep, perfect. Sure the bodywork has taken damage and the windscreen has cracked, but the overall shape has stayed the same and I'd be perfectly happy uh, saying that people could walk away from that, especially with the seat belts on and uh, an airbag. So uh, yeah, nicely done there. Right, let's see it, what it does with a 40 mile an hour impact. Now we have seen some differences between cars between 30 and 40, which I guess is no surprise. Also, we've had some cars where it's been practically the same. Grand Marshal and the uh, Cherry for instance. Yeah, a little bit of more deformation there. The doors bowed out a little bit. And the roof has slightly come up. But still, on the whole, a pass as far as I'm concerned. Again, airbags and uh, seatbelts would uh, negate any uh, negative impacts of the door moving out and anything like that. So, uh, yeah, overall pretty good, but definitely a, a noticeable difference between 30 and 40 miles an hour there. So, what is going to happen when we go to, like, 60 miles an hour? Is this car really going to be able to survive it? It is a car from the early 90s, and the Grand Marshal was as well, but I think that Grand Marshal had overall bulk on its side. Oh dear, no, no. I'm going to redo that just because we didn't see it in slow motion, but that is not confidence inducing whatsoever. It's a little bit difficult to line up these cars, especially when they're accelerating. This is why they do it with uh, wires in real life. I'm not accelerating cars, but yeah. E yes, I do not like the look of that impact. Not only has the door come off, which is not a good thing, because therefore your arms, legs could, could flail out of the your car into another vehicle you've impacted or any other environmental uh, debris. You've also got the roof going way up and the steering wheel has jutted out and to the right away from the driver, meaning that any airbag going off would mean that the driver's head and, and any other part of them would uh, miss that airbag by a substantial amount. I've seen this in uh, crash tests for a Euro NCAP and uh, yeah, often when a steering wheel moves out that, the, uh, the driver, passengers, whatever, miss a, uh, any airbags when, you know, whatever's in front of them moves out of the way. So uh, yeah, that is a big fail on that part. Did well with a 30 and 40 mile an hour impact, but like pretty much every car that we've had on uh, our review series, They've uh, failed at this, has failed at the 60 mile hour pack. So, uh, yeah, nonetheless, let's get onto the highway and see what happens when we crash into some real life vehicles at 60 miles an hour. Right, so here we are at the highway. We're going to crash into two similarly weighty sized vehicles, uh, then one that is really not. And we've got a Hirochi Sunburst right up front ahead of us. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what we can do against this because that is a newer car. Slightly heavier, but not by much. It's only a few hundred pounds, so uh, yeah, I'm just going to slow everything down a little bit first, so we can get everything uh, moving forwards. Now this is a 1.8 liter Hiroti Sunburst, so I'm not sure if it's going to be all that quick. Yeah, it gets up to 60, so that's fine. Right, that's what happens. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. On both car fronts, to be honest. Obviously, the doors have jutted out a little bit on the uh, 200BX. But, quite frankly, I'd have expected a bit worse, considering it's up against a far newer car. and um, Which is also slightly heavier. But I guess the newer car has, you know, more crumple zones, so maybe it's using the crumple zones of the sunburst to lessen the impact of its own uh, of the crash so uh, yeah that might well be playing a part but either way it's done pretty well there so uh, 
yeah, hats off to the 200BX there. Right, let's find another vehicle that's of similarly weighty, uh, of, of similar weight. What about the Marama? It's a little bit lighter, but I guess since we went up against a... Uh, actually, this version is this about the same weight, so yeah, 2610, it's about... 69 pounds way uh, less than we are, so uh, yeah, we'll go for this version. Actually, we'll go for the automatic, so it's a little bit heavier. Yeah, this is the uh, lengthened version of the Maramar, I think. Please don't crash on me. It's always a problem with mods. You don't know if they're going to crash on you or not. I'm not sure what version it is, but it's a version on the less, so let's see what it can do. Stop crashing on me, please. I do apologise for this. This game's a little bit inconsistent at times. There we go. Again, let's slow it all down so we can get everything set up properly. Let's see what happens. A little bit off centre, but not by much. Oh, yeah, neither car got away with that. To be honest, it's more of a realistic crash test anyway, being slightly off centre, because very few cars actually crash head-on at severe uh, speeds. So, uh, yeah, neither car dealt with that well. I'd rather be in the uh, 200 BXO than the Marama because, yeah, that's really gone right through the car to be honest whereas this is deformed and again we have the steering wheel moving off to the right but I'd say that will probably be a bit more survivable than the Marama so uh, yeah there we go right let's get in a heavy weight vehicle and see what the uh, 200BX can or can't do and again we're going to use the atypical uh, Roma we use it a lot of the times but because pretty much because it is a, a beast of a car and uh, yeah at least is capable of getting up to 60 miles an hour. So yeah, this is uh, I want one that's properly heavy. Yeah, we'll go for the diesel. Hopefully this will get up to 60. Yeah, this weighs about twice as, more than twice as much as the uh, BX. And it's obviously riding a lot higher. So, the inevitable is that most of the crash protection is overridden. And that is the result. In fact, we're going up into the air after that crash, which is only going to slam us back down and put more impact forces through the driver and the passengers. Yeah, that's pretty devastating, but... Quite frankly, I was expecting worse. I was expecting the whole car to, to be shrunk in half, quite frankly, considering how much heavier the uh, the Roma is. And how much um, lighter the uh, BX is in comparison, while also showing signs of weaknesses at times. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm really genuinely surprised by how well it did that could have been a lot better obviously but it could have been a hell of a lot worse so uh, there we go I feel this is a bit of a middling car in terms of safety though because the grid map was a pretty much a failure because it ran out of, for some reason the oil just killed off the car the lack of oil just from a brief moment upside down killed off the car I have seen that, that happen with the uh, with the uh, jeep knockoff whatever it's called where is it the uh, yeah the Ibishu hopper so Maybe it's an ambitious problem, I don't know, but yeah, I've seen it a uh, problem with that hopper as well. But it dealt with the rollover crash test really nicely. Uh, yeah, the wheels bent up, but the overall protection was fine. Same with the bar crash hard barrels and the same with the cinder blocks. 30 and 40 mile an hour small overlap impacts were good, but the 60 mile an hour impact was a fail. First two crash tests with against the uh, car, uh, well, uh, the first one against the Hirochi Sunburst was good. Miramar was a little bit middling and this was it expectedly not all that great but 
yeah, like I said, could have been a lot worse, but especially since you can see that a lot of the crash protection has been overridden. The bumper has been curled up, but the engine is pretty much still intact. So, uh, yeah, you can see where the impact has really hit hard on the car. And again, no surprise that it's uh, performed the way it has. But overall, pretty good car. Nice and fast, looks good, but also handles really rather well as well. Just not the best from its era in terms of crash protection. Nonetheless, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.